<laughs> Praise God. Well, we are in a beautiful year. And thank you, Lord, for bringing us here. And because the Lord has brought us here, we want to give you wisdom for successful living. Who would take some of that? <laughs> wisdom for successful living. You're going to live anyhow. You do know that. Except you check out of here, you're going to live. And if you're going, and if you're going to live, you want to live successful. But like everything that brings blessings and goodness, it don't happen by happenstance. It don't happen just by wishful thinking. Isn't that right? I told some people, Happy New Year. But I know it ain't going to happen by accident. You have to input some things for happiness to come in your life, in your family, in your circumstances and around you. Or you can be miserable as the day is long. <clears throat> Why you got a King James Bible in your hand? Because ain't no magic in the Bible if you don't get in it. Having it on your coffee table. I mean, you got a big one on your coffee table. You got to know what to do in that house while that Bible lay on that. You better be reading it and then doing what it say. And it creates an atmosphere of happiness in one's house and one's home. All right, open up your Bible with me. Let's get into it because we're going to teach some today. <laughs> Joshua 1 and 8. Hallelujah. Say wisdom for successful living. I'll have some of that. Mm -hmm. And the Lord will give it to you. Now, I can assure you, everybody in here today going to get something from Jesus. Everybody in here, you say, why? Because his word never come back void of power. Michael had never come back void of power. When God give his word, you're going to get something from him. Amen. And I want our ministry to become one that no matter how hopeless people are in life, you can come in here and find hope. no matter how hopeless your circumstance may be. Now, I'm reading from the New King James. Let's get into it here. It says, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do according that all that is written therein. Say all. all. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have what kind of success? <laughs> Who will have some of that? Amen. I mean, if you're going to come to church, you ought to be coming to get something. Huh? I, let's read it. Read it with me, Abundant Life. I heard myself reading. I didn't hear you. Let's do it together. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written therein. For you shall make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. It's something standing out to you in that scripture that the casual reader may not have seen. It didn't say God is going to make your way prosperous. And yet it is God. But he's telling you how he does it. He does it by giving you the wisdom and knowledge to make your way prosperous. Amen. Then in doing what the words say, you'll find the Lord will be your helper. Really, that's what bless is. You know that, don't you? God is helping me. Whenever you say I'm blessed, you're saying God have helped me. And when God help you, he helped you for the fullness of life. Everything that pertain to life, everything that come to you, he can help you, especially if it's contrary to his plan for you. Amen. So the Bible here say you will have good success. Isn't that elevating success? How I many of you wouldn't be mad if he said you'll have success? But to add good is a superlative. It takes it to the next level. And I'll have that. I don't want just success. I want good success. Talk to me in here. If you done fail in life, you ain't mad about this subject here. If you had problems and circumstances look like they don't want to leave you, then when the Lord say, all right, let me show you how to have good success. 
Hallelujah to Jesus. That means spirit, soul, and body, emotions, and life around you is harmonizing with the word of the Lord in your life. Let's go on. Third John 2 now. See, that's the old covenant there. And let me give you a working definition so we can go together in this subject here for success. Success is the accomplishment of an aim or purpose, favorable outcome. An accomplishment, an accomplish of an aim or person. So in 2020, whatever you aim at, whatever you setting yourself to, to, to do in 2020, then you want success in doing it. Amen. And, and success say favorable outcome. Isn't it something to do something for umpteen years and then it end up sour? Huh? Start something and can't finish it. But success means you'll have a favorable outcome. Favorable. Third John 2. Third John 2. Hallelujah to Jesus. Who came to learn something for 2020? The Lord will empower us with wisdom. Amen. Third John 2, you have it? Listen what it says. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things. Somebody praise him right there. If there were some things last year you didn't prosper in, this year you're going to prosper in it. Huh? And don't be sassy with me fussing about that. You're going to prosper in it this year. Don't make no excuses. You're going to prosper in how many things? All. all things. All things. And he says, and be in health. And be in health. That, that, that implication is take your health. If something trying to rob you of it, take it back. He says, how do you take it back? Put the word out there on that problem. Put some faith behind it. Decide that it is the will of the Lord that you be healthy. From the crown of your head to the soles of your feet to your fingertips. That no matter what been running through the family, you is where it stop at. Make no plans to die from what previous family members died from. They may didn't have the wisdom you have now. They may didn't have the knowledge you have now. So you can't let the experience become yours just by kinship. Or blood. Because when Jesus, we just took communion. And when we take communion in the spirit realm, you're getting a blood transfusion. <laughs> you say, that's mighty strong. I know it is. He is strong. He is a strong Lord. They that are joined to the Lord become one spirit with him. Christ in us is the hope of glory. You got Jesus in you. You ain't searching for him. You got the answer to life problems. And I love what the psalmist said. He's a present help, Brother Barnes. What kind of help is it? That means the help you need is present. It's not absent. It's right there. You ain't going to the hills no more. You ain't looking to the clouds no more. We know where God lived at. But we also know he lived in us now. And what he is on the throne, he's that on the inside of every believer. I pray at every prayer almost. We of God, little children, and have overcome the wicked one. Because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. 
Glory be to God. I'm going to talk about him until he show up in here today. <laughs> Greater, Ted Obosai, is he that's in you than any sickness or disease or problem that come up against you. What a mighty God. We serve. Somebody say, I wouldn't talk like that. That's because you limit to knowledge. But Job said, acquaint yourself with me and be at peace. Thereby good will come unto you. You got so much grace and blessings on you. The Bible says when you pray and stand for the innocent, the guilty, God will turn their verdict around. We got so much favor with God that God said, I'll help people who you, who you pray over, who don't even know me, who's guilty. But I'll turn the verdict because of you. That means you can't give up on your loved ones. Yeah, you can't give up on them. Now that does not negate that sometimes you need wisdom to handle them. But you don't give up on them. Give Jesus a good praise right there. I feel something happening here. He going to grace me to finish. That you prosper in all things. Be in health. Be in health. Watch this. Just as your soul prospers. Mm -mm -mm -mm. God put prospering and success in another arena. He's telling me and you that spiritual prosperity is essential for natural prosperity. You say, I know somebody that's prospering and they are not spiritual. Uh uh. If God tell you this is the way it is, this is the way it is. See, there are things that appear to be one way, and you will find out it's another. There's a whole lot of things are not as it appear to be. That's why he tell you, don't envy the wicked and choose none of their ways. For the righteous will inherit the land, but the wicked will soon be cut off. The wicked. So there are some things that have prospered, but with all the wrong ways of doing it. But we're talking about Proverbs 10 and 22, where the blessing of the Lord makes us rich. That is abundantly supplying, overflowing us, and we can't limit it to natural things only because you need more than natural things. However, if you neglect the spiritual things, you're going to find the natural being frustrated. Can I talk to you? Because this is 2020. We got a new beginning. We want to go in right. Talk to me, somebody. I say we want to go in right because how you start is how you're going to finish. So the Bible here said that you prosper. Say prosper three times. It belonged to you from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet to your fingertip. God wants you to do well, do well, do well, do well. That's what prosper means. Now, let me give you another spin on it because the Bible uh, give us this as the root meaning. It is to help on to help on the way to help one on his way or journey. Help prosper means helping you on your way or your journey. Now you can get you a good vine or strong expository and you can see that's exactly what it's telling you. So when God say prospering, that means I'm going to help you on the journey. What journey is I, I need help on? Life. Life. There's some things I got to have God to help me on it. God has the ability to help me on life journey. And, it's, and if you partake of his help, it's clear you're prospering. Then, then the writer tell us, my little children, I find no greater joy than you walk in the truth. So it is impossible 
to prosper with God without walking in the truth. Oh, 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 this is getting good, ain't it? I'm just getting started. Come on, give the Lord a good praise here. <laughs> hey, if you're going to see, come on, talk to me. That means some of us got to stop lying. Because the power of the Lord come on the truth. Sometimes the truth hurt, but the power of the Lord come on the truth. Sometimes the truth bring correction, but the power of the Lord come on the truth. Talk to me, but you can, you can go to the bank on this. Wherever the truth find you, it never leave you there. It always elevates you and lifts you up. I believe this service is a day of lifting of the Lord. That he's lifting us up to another place of strength and victory. Come on, somebody. All right, let's go on then. Let's go on. Proverbs 30, verse 24 through 28. So God wants us to prosper. Now let's get the wisdom because we say we need wisdom for prosperous living, don't we? I say, don't we? <laughs> Wisdom for prosperous living. Wisdom is acquired knowledge with skillful application of it. What is wisdom? Acquired knowledge with skillful application of it. So that means God is not about keeping his children ignorant. And ignorant is a curse anywhere is that. Amen. It, it, it is a forerunner for felon and a lot of things. Matter of fact, the Lord told the, 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 under the old covenant, he, the prophet spoke, he said, my, my people are destroyed for being ignorant to things. See, not attending church, but attending church and don't learn nothing. Or leaving your success to the outcome of the pulpit. You got it? I can teach you the word, but application belong to you. Who application belong to? And so then it's necessary. When I come to church, I learn and I do. 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 Then I help others to do what they learn. Come on, say it with me. I learn and I do. What else? I learn and I do, then I help others to do what they've learned. Hmm? So then let's get some wisdom. The Lord give us four things. He said they are small, but exceedingly wise. The first thing he give is the ants. He said the ants, though they are small, they prepare in the summer for the winter time. It means Without anybody coaching them and telling them, they know another season is going to come. So that means they have skillfully learned how to take advantage of every season. That's good. You know, that's, it, listen to me. When you're having problems with certain things in life, especially with necessity, and God give you favor with somebody who begin to carry you along in a season where you don't have to spend your money, where you ain't got to worry about food, when you ain't got to worry about shelter, then it is your responsibility to become an ant in that place. You prepare in that season for another season. You don't take it for granted that you're going to stay with somebody and they continue to pay your bills. Why? Because the law of self-preservation means God have blessed every human on planet Earth if they will listen to him to be able to provide for themselves and those that concern him. Even if they're in a farmland, they will have enough harvest come in to feed their home and the others around them if they follow God's order. Even the ant know that there's a winter coming. And so I'm under the favor cloud where I have no responsibility. And you know, the devil loves for you where you miss your window then the one who have favored you and blessed you, you leave and curse them because they don't understand it's time for you to go. 
So what have blessed you, you're biting the hand that fed you. Come on, listen to me now. We're going to learn from the ant. The Bible says they are small but exceedingly wise. That means there's an exception here and anybody can learn from them. I prepare for where I want to go. If I get to stay with you and don't have to pay no bills, I'm supposed to save up every dime I'm getting almost. Because I know the day is coming that one of me, I got to go. And I should leave better than how I showed up at your door. I don't leave out there talking about you that you didn't let me stay eight more months. I leave out blessing you. I bless you because you helped me. I bless you because you helped my children. I bless you because you helped me to stay in your provision. Come on, give Jesus a hand. Come on. Come on. The Bible says we're destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Sometimes it's not that we lack it, we won't be a, we won't be a doer of it. Because we're taking it for granted. The Bible says that it prepares for the future. Oh, glory to God. Right now in January, we're preparing all for 2020. Yeah. Glory to God. Preparation of the heart is a man. But the answer of the tongue is of the Lord. God don't prepare. You do the preparation and he'll give you the solution. Come on, say it. If I do the preparation, God will give the solution. Why some of you looking down at the floor? Look up here at me. I'm the one talking to you. The floor ain't talking. I prepare my heart. God will give me the solution. I mean, you know, if you're going to start a saving, you go to the bank and open up a saving account. Or you do it online now. But either way, you got to open it up. Or ain't no saving coming in there. Why? You ain't did no preparation. Let's go on to this next one now because we ain't going to stop. We got to get to something today. Then the Bible talks about uh, the rock badger. That is the rock rabbit, a feeble fold. Yet they make their homes in the crabs. That simply means the rock rabbit has no ability or defense against his enemy at all. The Bible in the King James call him a feeble fold. Old weak has no ability to, to, to fight off uh, predators. But the rock rabbit has the power of choosing. It chooses where it's going to live. And the Bible says it chooses to live in the cliff of the rocks. Though I can't defend my en to fight my enemies, but I'll choose a home or a foundation that's stronger than my enemies. So what we learn from this rabbit is the power of choice. Your choice has power in it. And your choice can give you victory over enemies. Though they stronger than you, but because I have the wisdom to make the right choices. And then I can't call superficial success as my foundation. Superficial, meaning I don't have a solid foundation. I mean, you know that that rock rabbit showing us the home of the rocks is solid. What you putting under, you got to be solid. Or it's going to be tried. And when the trials of life come, it don't, it don't show you you're faithless. It show you what you have built on. So we got to build on solid things. What's solid? The word. Somebody's like, oh, what is it? The word. Because God is the word. What's solid? Prayer. What's solid? Praise. You can praise God to every enemy be still. You can praise God to things turn around with family members. You can praise God to the heavens declare his glory over you. 
You can praise God till the Holy Spirit show up in your car. Show up in your shower. Show up in your kitchen. Show up wherever you're at. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Because it's a, it's a weapon. You can praise God around and over lack and your lack begin to bring supply. By the power of praise. I mean, you're doing the right thing as well. Let's go on now. Then the Bible tells us about this other thing <laughs> called the locusts. He said, have no king, yet they're all advanced in rank. So we went from uh, the ants, the rock rabbit, the locusts, and then the last one, of course, you find the King James say the, uh, translate the lizard, but it's really the spider. That the spider is even in a king's palace. That means the spider know how to seize opportunity. In 2020, you're going to seize your opportunities. Glory be to God. Your opportunity is going to show up and you ain't going to just look at it. You're going to seize it. Opportunity come by being in the right place at the right time. Hallelujah to Jesus. In the right place at the right time. Now, how do it come? The good, the steps of a good man and a good woman are ordered by the Lord. God will show you where to be at in the right place at the right time, hearing the right thing, meeting the right person. Glory be to God. And I'm declaring over you today that you will be in the right place at the right time. Your steps will be ordered by the Lord and opportunities are going to come to you and you're going to see it. <laughs> what do you say, Tasha? You're going to see it. You're going to see it. It's coming. Your opportunity will show up. Ecclesiastes said time and season come to all men. Everybody will get their opportunities. God going to make sure of it. And, and you know, when the Bible talk about tithing and God opened up the windows of heaven, well, you know what he wanted to think he's talking about? I pour out opportunities. You know why people miss the tithe blessing? They're looking for money. He didn't say money coming out of heaven. Well, come on, what money coming out of heaven? It will be counterfeit. God is not a counterfeiter. No, what God say, what I will let come out of heaven will generate money, will bring money. It will release money. It will show you how to make the money. Doors of opportunity. Come on, somebody lift your hand and start praising God for doors of opportunity. Doors of opportunity. Doors of opportunity. Open up. Open up. Don't you fool yourself. You ain't seen all the opportunities God have for you. He is big. And he will do exceedingly. How many of you like that word? Abundantly. Above. All you ask or think of him. He's going to exceed it. Thank you, Lord. He'll change your status overnight. He'll change your status overnight. Thank you for the witness, Michael. He'll change your status overnight. I don't know how long Joseph stayed in the prison, but one night it was the last. From the, from the prison to the palace what was afforded him an opportunity tell me how to solve the problems that's going on here praise God we see something about this locust the Bible said without a king without a king 
without a ruler. The locusts will, will work together in rank and in order without anybody driving them. What's the wisdom of the locusts? That the locusts give us the, the insight into what it means to be self-motivated, self-directed. Oh, Lord, help me. Order with discipline. Now, that's hurting some of your feelings right there because you don't like order. But you're going to find out as long as it's out of order, God won't touch it. You, you don't even have to get order and God shows up. Because he hangs around order. Confusion is of the enemy. Order is of God. And order is not against the anointing. There's some folks, oh, I'm operating under the anointing. And that's why you're staying out of order. As if the anointing and order is against itself. No, 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 no. They work together. The more orderly it gets, the greater the anointing rests on it. Why, why are they, why are they putting restraint on me and don't want to let me just do what I want to do in here? Order. Because if you get to do all you want to do, all the rest of us going to do the same thing. So when is Jesus going to be exalted? If all of us is being our own exaltation. Thank you, Gwen. Thank you. <laughs> the Bible says without. But what, what, without a king, Ooh, Lord help us here. Self-motivated. Can you be, can you be, can you, can you develop that in you if you don't have it? Yes, you can. Because we have some myths about leaders. Yes, really, that's what the locusts show you, leadership. And inside of us, all of us has potentials to be leaders. And it's so comfortable being a follower. But you have to decide to be a leader. Come on, talk to me. You know, you, you know you, you're in front. That means the, the first rotten tomato you usually hit the leader. So being in leadership, you have to have some tough skins. You can't be running from everything and everything hurts your feelings. Give me some help. Yeah, see, there's a folk, I want to be a leader, and you ain't even developed enough to stop being offended every minute. Misconstrued everything that's said. You got to rise above that in 2020. The prophet says, is if the footmen's you can't handle, what are you going to do when the horsemen show up? Offense ain't nothing but footmen, foot soldiers of the devil. You can't handle them yet. So when the horsemen come, what are you going to do? And they that faint in adversity is of little strength. You haven't got your spiritual prosperity, therefore you're fainting where you should be standing. Let me go on now. Without a leader, they become a leader. Without a king, they become a leader. Amazing to me, nobody teach them teamwork, yet they are team players. They know what it means to work with each other without getting the glory. Come on, talk to me. Come on now. They didn't call my name. Wait a minute here. Why we didn't call your name? That shouldn't mess you up. Because when you got leadership in you, you can handle not getting your name called every service. Even if man don't see us, David proved to us, God see you. And faithful is he who see you who will reward you. I feel a praise break in here. I say, I feel a praise break in here. I feel a praise break in the house. I feel it. Yes, 
So it ain't enough to tell us that. Okay, pastor, if that's, if I need self-motivated, if I need to learn how to be self-directed, you're going to see one of the biggest problems with believers, we don't know how to make a decision. When it's time to make a decision, we are afraid. That we're going to make the wrong one so we don't make no decision. And God is about getting you at a place of maturity that you can make a decision and stand by what you decide. And even if it's off, the Lord will help you. Ask Peter, though he was walking, he started sinking, but he said, Lord, the Lord saved him. Because the Lord going to help anybody who walk out on the water. Because it takes faith to please him. And there was, there was still 11 standing in the boat. So, ooh, look at that water. But Peter experienced something that the 11 didn't experience. He experienced that even though I'm sinking, if I call, he will answer me. Hey, he will help me even in trouble. You ain't got faith in God till you learn that. So then what is, where is the, the, the basis for self-motivation? Being self-directed. Talk to me. Not needing a king overseeing you and you still can make decisions and choices. The Bible shows where it starts at. The Bible tells us in the book of Romans. So let's go over there for a moment and see this. Found in the book of Romans. Hallelujah to Jesus. Let's go to Romans chapter 8. The first thing, the first thing we want to do is let, here's where it starts for the believer. Tell me where it starts. How many want to hear where it starts? For the believer, it starts with letting the Holy Spirit lead you. I say it again. Because, see, that's easy to miss that. That's clouding that. There's, there's turbo in that. There's power in that. Letting the Holy Spirit lead you. Now, let me tell you something. You don't wake up wanting the Holy Spirit to lead you. So something got to happen, ain't it? You know, one of the best prayers I think we can pray right here in 2020 because sometime our will is in the way. And because our will is in the way, God won't override your will. The stubbornness of man's will. And the unforgiving heart of man is why divorce take place in the land. What I said is the stubbornness of man's will and the unforgiving heart of a man is why we have divorce in the land. When Moses wrote it, that was the problem then, and here it is all these thousands of years later, it hasn't changed. Why? Because the heart of man is desperately wicked without God. I didn't say wicked, I said desperately wicked. That means there's some evil in us without God that you don't even know you'll do. Just get pushed in the corner enough. You'll find you are a daredevil. <laughs> so we say, Lord, where the will has been in the way. Because there's some loved ones who ain't walking with God for, because of their stubborn will. And God can't violate their will. So, Lord, where their will is in the way, you can't override it. So here's what I ask you. Put your desire in them to change, Lord. Do it in Jesus' name. Put your desire in them to want to change, Lord. Now God, without violating the will, begin to manipulate it.
Hallelujah. And there are people right now, he's manipulating them. See, their will is stubborn. Say, make you that way. Don't look down on them because we were the same way. We just have crossed over that bridge. Don't look down on them and don't throw a rock at them. Sin is rebellious. And it hardens the heart of man. You say, Pastor, this is mighty serious for the first son. I know it. We are crossing over and going in. And we want to come out on the other side. We ain't playing jack stones. We're playing for life. Give me some help in here. And some of you have been dealing with some mummies that you ain't even got business dragging over in 2020. The mummies was dead and you leave the dead in the past. Nothing come from mummies but a bad odor. You can't keep letting them cross over every year with you. There's some things you got to say, I reckon you dead. You're not crossing in this new year with me. You've cost me enough. I want to prosper. I want to prosper in all things. And God said, if I just walk in the truth, prosperity will meet you and me. So I need the, the Holy Spirit to lead me. Now, why is that so important? Because Corinthians tell us where the spirit of the Lord is. There's liberty. In other words, say freedom. So when you let the Holy Spirit start leading you, even though the devil playing with your head and trying to tell you, you shouldn't do this. Don't live like this because something is better on the other side. He lying. Because there's no better life than the spirit led life. And even if you're going to get a hundred on every test, God will make your stumbling and shortcomings work together for you. He'll use it as a stone to elevate you. Your weakness will become your strength to others. So I'm being led by the Holy Spirit. And when I let the Holy Spirit lead me, then there's some sin problems starting losing his hope. Because where the spirit of the Lord is, freedom has to show up. So it means sin loses its grip because I'm now I'm being led. Talk to me. There's some addictions. Glory, the fear of man, all those type of phobias, those things start falling off. Why? Because when a man and a woman start being led by the spirit of God, he began removing burdens off of you. He began destroying yokes around you. He began to re uproot addictions and DNA problems, stuff that's been running in the bloodline. He put his grace on it. And those addictions start falling off because where the spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. Now here's the, here's the safe place of letting the Holy Spirit lead you. You see, once you get, begin to submit to that leadership, and that's what you got to do. Jesus said it. Paul said it. As many as are led by the Spirit of God. What are they? You've been reading your Bible. You've been reading your Bible. God's sons and daughters automatically begin to mature and grow where they let him tell them what to do. I don't want nobody telling me what to do. Somebody telling you that why you don't want it. Because you're either letting God talk to you or the devil is telling you what to do. Now the Lord promised freedom and liberty. Satan promised bondage, destruction, loss, casualty. But I've come that you might have life and have that life to an overflow with freedom and peace and joy and health and prosperity and victory. For where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. I decided I wanted to be free from the addictions of my past. I had to yield to the Holy Ghost and let him show me how to come out of those holes, come out of those pits, 
quit making excuses to be miserable. And when you let the Holy Ghost lead you, he don't stop just with those things. He move into every arena. He'll say, no, that ain't the job for you. This job is the one you want. Now I work in a place where I can work. Because the Holy Spirit led me to my job. Jesus said when he come. Not if he come. When he come. He will guide you. He's a trusted guy. Jesus said he'll show you what to do. What's coming before it comes. Come on, give him some praise. Hallelujah. 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 So now what's happening? I'm not codependent now. Now, now the people say, wait, wait a minute. What done happened to them? Oh, no. The change have come. Thank you for being there for me. But I got him now. Help him. <laughs> oh. Glorious is the Lord. I got the Holy Ghost walking with me now. And he said, I'll never leave you. Even when you're going through, I'm by you. To show you how to come. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Woo. You ain't had no help till you learn to let the Holy Ghost help you in life. Y'all know I'm supposed to be teaching today. Y'all got me preaching like a madman in here today. <laughs> Lord, help me in here. I'm supposed to be teaching. But that's something happened when you start talking about him. I say, I'm going to talk about him till he show up in here. Come on, give me some. <laughs> Come on, give the Lord a praise. Woo. Mm. Jesus said, when he come, he will reprove the world of sin. He'll show you sin and why it's wrong for you. That's what reprove means. He'll show you sin. In other words, he'll show you what sin is all about. And he'll show you why it's wrong for you. That's his ministry. Then he will reveal righteousness to you. That is, he'll open up your understanding that God loves you just like you are. And once you accept his love, you get right standing with God. You're a righteous man and woman right now with all the problems that's going on. You're still righteous. Problems can't take away your righteousness. Problems cannot take away your righteousness. God, uniquely, is the only one who can separate you from your actions. The only one who can masterfully do it. God know what your acts are, but he know who you are. And when he deal with you, he know how to separate the two. That's what it means when he says, I don't deal with you after your sins. I deal with you after who you are. Now, what you can confuse that God who can separate you from it is somehow or another allowing you to do it. Uh -huh. because there's a difference between acceptance and approval. God will accept you without approving you. I accept you, but I don't accept what you do. You know, you know this, 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 this stuff that's going on, of course, you know there's a movement now that has to do with the, the lifestyles of homosexuality and lesbians. And in the church, we love all people. God loves all people unconditional. But here's what God does not do. He does not love what we do. He accepts you. I don't care what your problem is. And in the church, if it's a real church, we have to accept you. But just like if a murderer come in here, we have to say, all right, now that you are now a child of God, 
you have to drop your weapons and killing people. Talk to me. If a man, if a man is a pedophile, want to mess with kids and little children, you don't tell them, all right, now that you say it's still okay to keep doing it. Why? We accept you. You got a problem. The church helped you with problems. But we expect if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Listen, all things, leave them children alone. Pass away. And if it pass away, you're not a victim of that no more. I know it's strong, but this is 2020. How we come in is how we going out of here. See, so God's house is a house of hope, a house of mercy, and a house of love. We don't condemn nobody for their sin practices. Come on. Because in the same place, you got fornicators and adulterers. Ain't no different than somebody committing homosexuality or lesbianism. Sin is sin. But the answer to all sin, Jesus. Jesus. Now, we are not ignorant that some life need to be processed. Because when you done picked up bad habits and bad choices, sometimes attached to those is demonic oppression. That means a person trying to quit, but they ain't them no more. They got a spirit now burning in them with lust and lasciviousness. You say, what is lust? Uncon uncontrollable desire when it's at its fullness. What is lasciviousness? You done gave yourself to a sin till you're out of control. You say, I'm going to stop and you can't stop. Because stopping ain't just by saying I'm going to stop. You need power to break the yoke of the devil. And how it fall off, how it come off. For as many as are led by the Holy Ghost, he will remove the burden and destroy the yoke. You'll wake up one morning, don't want to do that no more. You'll wake up one morning, you're out of prison. You ask the question, who is my bailsman? Jesus is the one who bail you out. Amen. Now we love everybody because God's love is unconditional. The wages of sin is death. We don't put no pretty name on it. Listen to me. And cause time and culture and politics change. But the Bible said, in Malachi, he said, I am the Lord. I change not. So even though my society have changed, because you're going to see in this, one of the responsibilities when you've been, been led by the Lord, you get in a place that you start making strong choices, good choices, and you quit making others the responsibility for your bad. See, if somebody did you young, wrong when you were young, then you ain't the first one. And we certainly don't make that light as a victim. But what we're trying to say, there's a whole lot of victims who have stood up on their feet and they're walking with the Lord. 